to start with your opponent, Boise State. Uh, you guys swept them in a couple of close games earlier this year. What, what did you like about the matchup? Why do you think you fared so well? And, and what are going to be the difficulties posing against them? Well, I don't know if it has really anything to do with the matchup, uh, per se, because they're they're big, they're athletic, they got a lot of like sizes. Um, they present a lot of problems. I just think we were playing really well. Uh, we were coming off two really good games against UNLV, and we started really getting into our rhythm and and probably had the best momentum we've had uh, all season long on both sides. I thought we were playing really well offensively, and we were really defending well. I think we go into this game where it seems like after now having three games after the pause, um, we've been we I think we're getting some of our offense back and some of that rhythm back. But um, defensively, we still got a long way to go of getting back to where we were when we last played Boise. So um, we, we've got to be much better fundamentally defensively uh, in this game because they can really score the ball and they got a lot of options. Where do you guys think you need to improve defensively then uh, to get back to where you were when you were playing Boise? Yeah, just fundamentally. Um, I thought we were in a really good place um, coming out of the last time, right before the shutdown. I thought we were coming in at a really good place where we were taking things away. We were really fundamental, uh, and that meaning fundamentally how you play in a stance, not just on the ball, but off the ball. Um, we've, been, we've been getting out of a stance off the ball, and we can't do that. Um, how we rebound the ball. We've been a really good rebounding team all year. In the last three games, we haven't met our defensive rebounding goal. So um, rebounding has been a, a, a key. Uh, how we defend the dribble drive, uh, how we defend the post, um, how we rotate and what we call help and recover. Um, sometimes we'll help, but we don't recover. And then sometimes we don't help at all. And then there, there's no recover. And so it's getting back to those fundamental things that we were getting pretty good at that I think we've had a lot of slippage in the last three games. You look at the top four seeds in this tournament. I mean, all could be in the NCAA tournament next week. You were three and four against those teams. So you did match up really well against the top tier of this conference. What gives you optimism that you guys can go and make a run in this tournament and, and get that automatic bid? Well, just because I, I think we were playing well and hopefully we took a step in the right direction um, in the Colorado State game, because uh, obviously a huge game for them. Uh, it was a big game for us. And I thought we really played well in that game. I thought we did a lot of good things, especially offensively. Um, and then we got down and to have the, the resolve to get back in it and come back and make plays down the stretch, win a close game. Those are all things that you got to be able to do in March, and especially in a tournament that at least in the conference tournament is a one and done deal. And and we know that we're not we're not per se on the bubble or in a position that like maybe a Boise and Colorado State and Utah State are to where they're uh, in consideration. So we know that if we're going to do anything, we've got to win three games in three days to get season number four. So I think our guys are excited about it. Um, we've had good energy. Uh, we're going to be rested. Boise is going to be rested. Um, so it's a, it's about I think the guys are confident now that they uh, of coming off the Colorado State win. Had that not been a win, you know, now we're looking at losing three in a row all to the top of the league, and now you have to play a top of the league member in the first round. Could have been a different mindset, but I think we've got a, a pretty decent mindset going in. It's kind of become a weekly question about Zane Meeks' availability, but, I mean, do you have any feel for whether you'll be able to have him this week? We don't – I don't know that much. He did not practice yesterday, so, um, you know, I'm anticipating that he won't be – uh, available, but we don't know that for sure till till Zane says one way or the other. Coach, you're no stranger to this conference tournament. Uh, what does it take really to be successful in this type of setup to where you're playing these teams now? It seems like, you know, a third time in a season. Well, I've always thought postseason, you've got to be able to defend. Um, doesn't mean you're shutting somebody out, but you've got to have a lot of urgency and a lot of intensity uh, fundamentally being really sound at the defensive end so that you're not giving up easy scores, uh, whether that be in transition, whether that be in second shots, whether that just be in half court defense to where you're just easy to play against. So I think it starts there. And then secondly, when you get to March, usually teams that advance are, are making shots. Um, you got to be in good rhythm. And sometimes that takes teams a little bit longer to do it when you're on neutral floors. Like we didn't play at UNLV this year. So uh, with a 
with a young team and everything, this is going to be their first time that they're even in the Thomas and Mac. Um, so how we start shooting the basketball, what kind of game we have in shooting the basketball. Cause I do think uh, to really advance in March, whether it's a conference tournament or it's an uh, NCAA NIT tournament, um, you've got to get in good rhythm offensively and make some shots. Grant was named uh, newcomer of the year in the conference and, and first team uh, this morning by the media. Uh, he's obviously been great in the clutch moments. Is that something that is just inbred into a player? Why do you think he's had so many of those moments this year? I mean, not only the three game winners, but also the big three at San Diego State that tied the game up with two seconds to go. Yeah, I, I've known him a long time and he's just got that toughness to him. He's got that. Um, he, he likes he likes that moment. Um, and, and I think case in point, Chris, is like our game against Colorado State. I, I didn't think he had a good flow offensively. He had made a three all game. Um, and then he has a, a, enough of that toughness that he's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to take this shot and it's going to be a step back going to my right, which for a righty, a step back to the right is about as hard a shot as you can take. Um, and he drains it. Um, and it's just his mindset. He's got a really good get on to the next play type of mindset when it comes to his offense. And, uh, I think he had a really good year. I, I thought, you know, to, do what he did point wise, do what he did with assist turnover wise. Um, he's just had a really good year and I think he's only going to get better. Andrew or Alex or Shannon, do you have any questions before I turn it over to the Boise media for some questions? No? Okay, Boise media, uh, we'll start with Bob Beeler and then uh, Rachel and Will and Johnny. So Bob, go ahead. Coach, backcourts are always key in the tournament play. So talk a little bit about yours, Sherfield and Cambridge, what they bring to the table, and maybe how you think they compare with the other backcourts in the conference. Well, there's no secret. That's a, a pretty important piece uh, for our team, and their numbers have showed it. I think they're all conference uh, selections, in my opinion. They're, they're two really good guards. They can, they can score it. Um, and they've got the defensive uh, capability as well. So there's been a lot on them just because of our, our youthfulness and our inexperience. And these are two guys that have had really good years for us um, and have been a big key for us winning. So um, that's not going to change as we get into the tournament. I'm, and, and obviously Boise knows a lot about them just as we know about uh, Boise's good players. But um, obviously when you, I think you start preparing for Nevada, it starts with Grant and Des. And then your two centers that, that alternated both did pretty well against Boise State. What were they able to do, Washington and Himes, in the two matchups in February? Well, we got good size with those two guys, and they're long and they're athletic. And um, KJ can uh, extend the floor a little bit because he can shoot the ball out to three. And Warren has, I, I think, done a really good job of just developing the ability to run. Um, he's done a really good job of running the floor. And um, I think both of them are starting to – really come into their own of just understanding how hard you have to play. And um, I think we've won some games here late in the season because of the development of those two. Thanks coach. Uh -huh. Rachel. Uh, good morning, coach. Nice to meet you over zoom. Uh, I just have one question for you. Uh, we don't know the status of Abu Kijab, so I assume you wouldn't either. Um, how much do you think Boise State's game and approach is going to change if they don't have him available on Thursday? Yeah, that's, I mean, I don't know that answer. Uh, obviously, he's a very good player. I have a lot of respect for him as a player. And, um, but we'll, we'll prepare like he's going to be there. Um, but we don't know that status either. But um, obviously, a very good player who's had a, I think, an all conference type of season. He's, he's been a huge key to them, both offensively and defensively. So uh, we'll just have to wait to see what his availability are or is, but we will prepare like he's going to play. Thank you. Uh-huh. Will? Hey, Steve, just wondering, what kind of challenges does Derek Alston present for you guys? Well, really, really talented. Uh, somebody that I have a lot of respect for because he got to college and he, he made himself better. He got stronger. He gained weight. He worked on his skill skill set. Um, and he's somebody that is just really hard to guard because of his length. He's got size. He's got length. Uh, he can post you, he can drive you, 
He can hurt you in transition. He's a very good three-point shooter. Um, there's just a lot of things that you have to guard in regard uh, to him offensively. Um, and like who we have in Grant, he likes big shots. He's not afraid of the moment. Um, and he, he's somebody that's a, a huge concern for us because he's one of those guys in the league that can go for 25 plus if, if he's on and we got to hope that he's not that on. You mentioned you guys are playing with some confidence after the Colorado state win this time of year in March conference tournaments, how important is confidence? Well, I think you, you, you at least want to be feeling good about yourself individually and collectively in March. If you're still, uh, questioning that it's hard to, to play well. And I think that's part of confidence is part of the mental toughness thing of, um, you got to get on to the next play. You got to get on to the next game. And our team's done that. And I, I've been very, very pleased with that. I, I was telling John Ramey earlier that, you know, that that's the thing I'm probably most pleased with this team. I think our longest losing streak's been two. Um, and that's not easy to do for, for this group of guys to do this not knowing, not having experiences and now going through a COVID year where there's no fans and parents don't get to come to most of the games and not going to class with peers. They've got a lot that's been on their plate as has everybody else, but older teams this year, um, I think have a, a tremendous advantage. And for our guys to, uh, you look at other young teams in our league, other young teams across the country, I'm probably betting they've had longer losing streaks than two. And so we haven't gone through a lot of long streaks of not playing well. And that's a great credit uh, to our players. Our, our players have, have really stayed to the course of learning and growing and working regardless of what happened to us. Um, and I, I've appreciated that most out of this group. So, you know, I think we're feeling pretty good. I, you know, it's not like we're like crazy confident, but um, we know that um, there's going to be a lot of talk in this tournament of, San Diego State, I think, is in. So I, they've already won the league. I think the talk is going to be about Colorado State, Utah State, and Boise. Um, so we come in under the radar, and we know that we're a little bit different. We're going to have to win all three. These other teams may not have to win all three, um, but we've got to win all three of them. And more more so than the, the national tournament, um, it's there's only two conference titles, and one of them has already been decided. So – we're one of those other teams that have a chance now to go after the second one. And I fully expect our guys to be ready to do that. Thanks, Steve. All right, Johnny. Yeah, coach John Mallory with KTIK sports radio in Boise. Um, you've obviously been in this league before, uh, had tremendous success kind of when the league you could argue was maybe even at its apex. Do you feel now that the league is trending more in that direction and getting better with each year? Yeah, this is uh, only my second year with this group of, of schools and teams. Uh, I definitely think we're trending that way. Um, I would agree with you. I, you know, back in the day, uh, you know, I had Utah and uh, BYU and TCU. Um, I, I think it was a different landscape. It was a different landscape before all the Power Fives start buying people up and the whole landscape change. So, um, but I do think uh, this league is trending that way. We're starting to do some more things in non-conference scheduling, uh, which is a positive of scheduling up uh, and getting some big wins and big opponents. Uh, and then the league games, um, I, I really like the coaches that are in this league. Um, a lot of young, a lot of young coaches that are doing it the right way. And so I definitely see a great trend in this league moving forward. Coach, um, Coach Knight once said the best time to play a freshman is when he's a junior. Um, your team made up primarily of freshmen and sophomores. Are, are kids just ready quicker now? If so, why? Yeah, I, I'm not sure on that. I, but Coach is, Coach is right. You know, you want to get old and stay old. Um, but it's been really hard. Um, I, I think it's, it's just a different era, you know, in my era, kids would come in in red shirt and not even think about it. I remember, um, my sophomore year, the class behind me, I think we had five guys and all five of them red shirted. Um, that's unheard of today. Um, you know, now it's just a big push now with the NCAA because of all the outside pressure of players and probably parents as well transfer and play right away. You don't even have to sit out, you know, so that's the next step. So I think the transfers, the, 
the transfer portal, you know, I didn't have that when I played. So it was like, or early in my coaching career, you know, it was normally there wasn't as many transfers going on and you had no transfer portal that has become kind of the, the next tier of what's been cool other than the NBA portal. So it's just a different view of things. But uh, I think for a league like the Mountain West, um, the older you are, that favors you, I, I, I believe. Power five schools, maybe that changes a little bit because if you're fortunate enough, like at Kentucky and, and schools like that, that your freshmen are the top five, top 10 coming out of that class, a lot of those guys are ready to play. Now, with that said, um, I think for our league and what we've been able to do, um, our freshmen have really performed at a really good level. You know, Trey Coleman has been getting better and better all year long, uh, and he's having a great freshman year. Uh, and then you look like Daniel Foster, who missed the first two and a half months of the season, and now he's in the starting lineup doing great things for us defensively, handles the ball, makes good decisions. Um, and then a lot of our transfers had to sit out. So I've been very pleased with our young people, but it's still, I think, um, an advantage if you've got age and experience. And finally for me, Coach, if you're able to win this tournament, um, you'll join Lon Kruger and Tubby Smith as the only coaches to take five teams to the NCAA tournament. Just what would that mean for you? Would you think that's pretty cool? Well, I think it's cool. Uh, but, you know, mine is about our young men. You know, I've always said, I, and I think it's because I was a player first. I just have a real appreciation for for players. I got a great appreciation, even more so of Coach Knight and my father and guys that have coached me in the past of what they go through and how hard it is to coach. Um, and we are in a different era, but I've always had a great appreciation of players make plays. And, um, you know, we hope as coaches, we can prepare them and do the best we can fundamentally to help them be successful, but players have to make plays and, and get it done. And if we were fortunate enough to do that, I, I'd be most pleased because of this group of young men have been a lot of fun to coach. They, uh, I understand the year they've been through and the complications that you go through. And again, not, not being able to hang out with your peers, uh, not having your families come to games. Um, it's just been a really odd year. And if they were able to cap it off with this, I'm already very, very pleased with them. But if they could make another run, um, that would just, that'd be icing for them because they deserved it because they've worked awfully hard this year. Thanks, Coach Alford. Thank you. I just had one more. Um, I know you guys, the goal is to win the Mountain West tournament, get to the NCAA tournament. Um, I'm sure the NIT you guys would accept. Would you guys go to like a CBI? Uh, would you be open to that given how young your team is? Or is I it think that's, that's a little, that's a little tougher, Chris. Um, okay. NCAA and IT, um, you know, that makes sense. Um, but paying to go somewhere and no fans and those type of things, I think just financially, um, you know, we're, we're trying to do everything we can to help our university in this COVID year. Um, and President Sandoval has been absolutely outstanding um, in trying to help all of our um, athletic teams kind of kind of go through the, the weeds, you might say, because financially it's just been a really tough year uh, with no fans for football, no fans for basketball. That makes it very hard on, on everybody. And to now go to a postseason tournament where you're going to you you've got to pay out of pocket and then you got to pay out of pocket to travel and um and and where you stay and everything else that's a little different than the normal cbi year uh, where you're playing home games and you're getting fans so we'd have to look at it but i would i my guess right now is i'd lean towards no